Hi, everyone. Welcome to the uh, Illinois Association for College Admission Counseling Virtual College Fair. We are so excited you are here with us, and thank you so much for joining. Before we get started, we do have a few housekeeping items to note. First, if you have any questions at all, feel free to use the Q&A button to type in your questions to the presenters at any time. They are there and ready and available to answer any questions you have during their presentation. Your camera and microphone are off. You are muted and your video is off. The panelists can't see or hear you. And this recording will be available a week from today. All sessions are being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com backslash Illinois. We are in session C7, right here where my mouse is circling. And this will be the order of our presentations for tonight. So without further ado, I'll get out of the way and introduce our first presenter from the University of Missouri, Columbia, Mizzou. Hi everyone, my name is Casey Fleming and I'm one of two transfer admissions coordinators that we have here at the University of Missouri. Um, and my coworker Myra um, is also here and she'll introduce herself. Hi, my name is Myra Santander and yeah, we're both transfer admission coordinators. So Casey, I'll let you go. All right. So for the University of Missouri, Columbia, we are located in Columbia, Missouri, right in the heart of Missouri, just halfway between Kansas City and St. Louis. We've got just over 31,000 students on our campus this year, and we've got students from all 50 states and more than 100, and more than 100 countries worldwide. Um, and we've got just over 300 degree programs to choose from. Mizzou does offer bachelor's, master's, and doctoral programs. If you're looking at just undergraduate majors, we've got just over 200 of those to choose from. So there's a lot of opportunities for you all to get involved as students. So we do have 600 plus organizations. So this ranges from sports clubs, organizations um, based on your major uh, and kind of identity too. So we do have a website for that and it lists all of that. We have the largest alternative breaks program here. It's called MAB, it stands for Mizzou Alternative Breaks. It's just a good uh, opportunity for you all to give back and meet other students along the way. And we also do like to highlight our team organization. So this is stands for Transfer Experience and Advising Mentor. It's a 10 week program for students who are transferring in and it's just to get you familiar with other students who are transferring in and also all the different resources here on campus for you. If you guys would like to see how your transfer credit will come into Mizzou before you think about applying, you certainly can do that. Um, we've got two websites that you can use. We do partner with transferology.com. Um, and so you can certainly use transferology to see how your courses could transfer into a specific major here at Mizzou. But we also have our own equivalency site as well. So if you're looking for course equivalencies and this comes across, you can certainly use this website to see how your courses might transfer into the institution. So here we do have transfer scholarships. So these are automatic scholarship based on your admissions GPA. So each time we receive new transcripts, you are reevaluated for this GPA. Um, and so for out of state residents, we have two kind of two ways to get uh, our scholarships to receive that out of state tuition waiver. So it's either 50% off or 100% off. And whichever one you rank fall under, that's the one that you can qualify for. We also do have departmental scholarships. And we have something called Scholarship Universe where you can log in, create an account, and you can see all the different scholarships available for you to apply. So transfer admission requirements are pretty simple. Uh, most of transfer students fall under this first category that's having 24 completed college credits with a 2.5 cumulative GPA, and then having a C minus or higher in a transferable math course or a transferable English composition course. Um, we just want to make sure you've got some of those basics out of the way before transferring in. 
If you'd like to transfer in with less than 24 completed college credits, then the following rules would take effect. So that's just having a 2.5 GPA in the classes you have taken. Um, and then you also must meet MU's freshman admission requirements. So we'll just need a few extra documents from you if you're planning on transferring in um, with less than 24 completed college credits. So there's three main steps in our application process. The first one is to submit and complete your application and your application fee. Your second step will be to submit official college transcripts. And if you are meeting kind of our freshman requirements, this will include your high school transcripts. If you have more than 24 college credits, we just need your college transcripts. And then your last step would be to complete the FAFSA uh, and make sure that you have Mizzou added to that school. Just some application deadlines to be aware of. If you want to start at Mizzou in summer 2021, application is due by June 1st. If you want to start in fall 2021, applications are due by July 1st. And then if you're not looking to start until spring 2022, applications are due December 1st. If you all have any questions, you can always email transfer to MU at Missouri.edu. Casey and I kind of handle that email. And so we'll be the main people answering your questions. It could be any questions. We direct you all to the right departments also and kind of have a good understanding of MU and all the processes. And then we also offer a few other ways to learn more about Mizzou. So we've got virtual transfer presentations, some Zoom one-on-one -on -one meetings with Myra and myself. And then we are offering some limited in-person campus tours. So if you do wanna come and visit campus, we are offering those um, on Friday afternoons for the time being. And you can sign up for any of those events on our admissions website. And that's all we have for you. So I'll go ahead and stop sharing my screen. Thank you guys so much for listening. Thank you, all great information. Our next presenter is from Drake University. Okay, can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Okay, wonderful. So nice to be here. I am Rochelle Setsodi, like she said, and we are gonna get to know a bit about Drake. And my PowerPoint is not working. There we go. So Drake Relays. This is a, a collegiate Olympian and high school track and field event that happens each year. In conjunction with that, there's events on the Painted Street, which is a marquee part of Drake University, and student organizations paint squares on that Painted Street, and it ends up in a paint fight that you can see there. This is Griff too. He is our live mascot and a pet therapy dog, so you do get to see him often around campus. And then we have Spike, our athletic mascot. And we are about just shy of 3,000 students. So we'd like to say it's the perfect size, not too big and not too small. We have over 100 organi um, or majors in arts and sciences, business, education, journalism, pharmacy. We have graduate programs in all of those as well. And we also have a law school. So you can certainly mix and match um, variety of academic areas. We have over 140 student organizations, so anything from student government to intramural sports to multicultural, religious, et cetera. So lots of different things to choose from there. We are division one in athletics. We just made it in our men's basketball team in March Madness. So our first game is on Thursday, so go Bulldogs there. Nearly 70% of our students come from out of state. And with our alumni network, we actually have all 50 states and over 82 countries across the globe represented. Our faculty student ratio is 10 to one and our average class size is 21. So we promise uh, these four things in the Drake commitment to all of our students, that mentorship with faculty, opportunity to serve with on campus, within campus or the community, the power of community with faculty, staff, and students to help you get to those next places if it's research, internships, job after Drake, and that lifetime of value to tap back into that. So Des Moines, who knew? There's so much going on here. We like to say we did. Art, music, theater, shopping, dining, trails. Des Moines is located um, in the middle of Iowa, which Iowa is in the middle of the country. So we kind of um, are, like to say we're in the middle of it all. 
So lots of things to get involved in. Um, the area is great for our students to tap into best place to live in the US for millennials, hippest, um, top city for business and careers, which is huge for internship opportunities and time after Drake with the financial, the government, the state capital, banking, education, et cetera systems. So this is a huge thing I wanna make sure that you all know with our articulation agreement. So I'm gonna to skip to the next slide. If you have, um, as a transfer student, a minimum of a 2.0 GPA and 60 transfer credits, and you're getting an AA from Iowa, Illinois, Minnesota, Missouri, or an AS from Community College in Iowa, or have a bachelor's degree, you automatically meet Drake's general education requirements. That means you just focus on your major once you get here. So since this uh, event is coming out of Illinois, I wanted to make sure that you all knew that part of it. So can you picture yourself at Drake? Um, if so, we'd love to have you apply, um, either our application or the common application. We just need your college transcripts and if less than 24 hours, your high school transcript as well. We have guaranteed transfer scholarships. Those are 18 to $22,000 per year. There's nothing you need to do to apply for those other than apply for admission. And if you happen to be Phi Theta Kappa, then it's 20 to $24,000 per year. So again, upon admission, these are guaranteed. So congratulations on admission and scholarship as you go through that. We also have a variety of other outside scholarships that you can see here that you can apply to and more even than are listed. So a marquee thing about Drake is the Drake tuition guarantee. So when you start at Drake, your tuition never increases. So that helps with cost savings, clarity and planning, and you're locked in. So you don't lose the value of your scholarship over time. Um, our graduates are successful and our most recent statistic is 95.5% of our students are either working or undergraduate school within six months of graduation. Recently, the last many few years have been 98, 99%. We have dropped to the 95.5% even in a pandemic, but we're pretty proud of that number even so. 97% of our students, um, we earn, students earn more over time. That was based on the economist. And 92% of our students um, either have an internship or practical experience to help you get that job after break. We have a variety of visit options, both virtual and in-person. So I encourage you to take advantage of that including faculty appointments going on virtually as well. So that is a huge benefit. So we think you're gonna love it here. If this is a place that you wanna look at, this is our team. We have a variety of counselors within the Illinois area on the first year side, and then I work with transfer students. And so feel free to get in touch with me. I'd be happy to help you. And I always encourage students to apply to at least two schools so you can get admission, scholarship, financial aid, transfer credit, time to degree and make a well-informed decision about transferring. So thank you so much. Thank you, we really appreciate it. Just a friendly reminder, if you have any questions at all, to feel free to submit those through the Q&A. Um, our presenters are there and ready to answer any questions you have. Our next representative is from Fontbon University. Okay, can you see my screen? We can see your screen. Oh, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Hi, everyone. Thank you. My name is Lauren Cuddy, and I am from Fontbonne University. I am an assistant director of admission here at Fontbonne, and I work with all of our transfer students. So I'd like to start out with Fontbonne at a glance. We are a private liberal arts university located in Clayton, Missouri, just outside of the city of St. Louis. If you are familiar with St. Louis, we are close to Forest Park, the zoo, um, the Del Mar Loop, and we have a lot of great restaurants and fun things to do. So it's a great area to be in. We are very proud of our close knit community here at Fontbonne and you'll definitely have that community feeling and support when you step on our campus. 
Our size is around 1,200 total students, so we're definitely a smaller institution with a student to faculty ratio of 10 to 1. So our students really get to know their professors, their advisors, their peers, and other students in their classes. And we have 40 plus undergraduate majors, 34 minors, and a variety of master's programs as well. I wanted to take a moment just to list some of our more unique majors or some of the majors that we do really well here at Fontbon. We are ABET accredited in computer science and cybersecurity. We have a great dietetics program, which is a coordinated program for bachelors and masters. We excel in education, including deaf education, early childhood, elementary, secondary, and special education. We also have exercise science, fashion merchandising, speech language pathology, and sports management. Um, like I mentioned, we have over 40 majors, so I've included the link to our academics website so you can see the rest of the majors as well. For the admission process, it's pretty easy for our transfer students. We have a free online application on our website. It'll only take about 10 minutes to complete, and then we will just need your official transcripts from every college or university you've attended. Once we have those transcripts, we will complete a transfer credit evaluation. So we'll be able to show you an estimate of how your courses will transfer in and which courses you would have left to complete your degree here at Fontbonne. After that, we will send out an admission decision and your financial aid, which we always schedule a time to go over with our students to ensure that they are comfortable with their financial aid offer. Um, final steps are submitting a deposit and then you connect with your academic advisor to enroll. For financial aid, our transfer students are eligible for one of two options, a merit scholarship or the Fontbonne Community College Commitment Scholarship, which we shortened to FC3. Um, the merit scholarship is based off of your GPA and it's from 3,000 to 8,500. If you have your associate's degree, you are eligible for the FC3 scholarship, which gives you a flat tuition rate of 15,000. Um, and this year that equals around $12,700 in scholarship. We also offer a scholarship for Phi Theta Kappa members. And then this does not include any aid that you would receive once you fill out the FAFSA. We are Division III athletics, so unfortunately we can't offer athletic scholarships. However, this is a list of the sports that we offer. Um, you'll notice the three in blue, those actually are not regulated by the NCAA, so we can offer athletic scholarships for those specific, and that's esports, cheer and stunt, and dance. I thought it might be helpful to include a list of our student organizations as well. So this is not a comprehensive list. We have a lot more available on our website, but we do have a variety of student organizations um, that revolve around mentorship, leadership opportunities, um, just fun student activities where you get to know your peers um, and have fun on campus, um, and a lot of organizations that revolve around your major specific as well. So this is just a quick list of those. And then finally, some student resources that we have on campus. We offer our Kinkle Center for Student Success, Academic Advising and Engagement, um, where you can receive a variety of student resources and assistance. Um, they specialize in any accommodations that a student may need. They offer professional and peer academic coaching. They offer free tutoring and they have a writing center where you can get assistance with your essays. Um, we have a career development office and we also have a counseling and wellness office. So that is it for me as far as transferring to Fontbonne University. Um, please feel free to contact me if you have any questions. I would love to chat about your transfer credits, financial aid, or any questions you might have. Awesome, thank you. The next presenter is from Palm Palmer College of Chiropractic. Thank you. 
Good evening, everyone. My name is Emily Danger. I'm an admissions counselor here at Palmer College of Chiropractic. So first, I thought it would be great to just share a little bit about what chiropractic is. So chiropractic is a healthcare profession, of course, that we focus on the spine and other joints in the body and how they connect to the nervous system. And chiropractors use what's adjustment, which is a very safe and specific control force that they apply to the joints it, to help them overall improve their quality of life without drugs or surgery. So that's the main thing with chiropractic is that we don't use any, any drugs or surgery to treat our patients. So just a little bit of the history, and it's super important uh, to share because over 125 years ago, chiropractic was actually founded right here in Davenport, Iowa at Palmer College. So the dapper gentleman right here is Dee Dee Palmer. He is the founder of chiropractic as we know it 125 years ago. This was a photo of the first adjustment. So here is Dee Dee Palmer. He's delivering adjustment here to a gentleman named Harvey Lillard. Harvey was a janitor in Dee Dee's building. So he had come into Dee Dee's office and said, oh no, like he couldn't hear. So for about 17 years, Harvey was deaf. He was unable to hear. And so Dee Dee performed this first adjustment here and it was actually able to restore Harvey Lillard's hearing. So at first Dee Dee was running around the streets of Davenport telling everybody that he had found a cure for deafness. So Dee Dee went on to adjust a few more patients. The next gentleman who also suffered hearing loss, he didn't relieve the hearing loss, but he actually lowered the gentleman's blood pressure and so forth. So then it was determined, okay, I actually didn't find a cure for deafness, but I was able to uh, use spinal manipulation to get people uh, feeling better again. So that is how chiropractic was originated back here in Davenport. Next, we'll share a little bit about the scope of practice. So what do chiropractors do? So of course, they're the primary healthcare professionals for spinal health. So usually when you hear about chiropractic, you hear them saying that, oh, chiropractors just crack back. We don't wanna use that word. Uh, we deliver those adjustments. We're not cracking anything. Um, you do hear those, uh, those sounds sometimes when you're at the chiropractor, um, but our chiropractors are taught how to adjust the full body. So extremities, they can adjust your kneecap, your elbow, your wrist, all over. So they don't just focus on the neck and back um, and the spine. They focus on all regions of the body to make sure that you're getting uh, overall health and your body's performing in the highest performing functional potential. So alongside of those adjustments, chiropractors are also focusing on soft tissue therapies, uh, physical and physiotherapy. So we do have a rehab facility. We also have the largest clinic um, in the United States for chiropractic. They also learn how to take and read their own radiological reports, and they can also help their patients with nutrition and weight management. So chiropractors are kind of the jack of all trades. So if you kind of think of, you know, what physical therapists do, some of the things that doctors do, uh, of course, those adjustments, athletic trainers, kind of chiropractors kind of have a gamut of all of those things, but they also can adjust. So it makes them stand out just a little bit more. As you look at the chiropractic profession and its job growth, we are a booming field. So we have a number one in job security with a 99% employment rate. So pretty much when you get out of college um, here at Palmer or chiropractic, you're pretty much almost guaranteed a job because you can either start your own practice or you can associate under another doc. Um, you can work as a sports chiropractor. There's so many options that you can do after you graduate. We're the third largest healthcare provider. So number one would be, of course, your medical doctor, because we definitely need them. Your number two is your dentist, keeping those teeth clean. And number three is your chiropractor, uh, performing that regular maintenance care with you. 10% job growth outlook. Um, and then at, along the bottom here, you can see our job salary or different salaries. So your medical doctor is coming in at about 185,000 um, annually. That's a national average. And then your DC is right behind them with 143,000. Now, of course, this depends on how long you've been in practice and of course, where you live. Somebody living in a small rural town, um, kind of similar to Davenport would probably make a little less than somebody living in a big city like Chicago, Los Angeles, or um, different places like that. So how do you become a doctor of chiropractic? It only takes you a three and a third year, so a total of 10 trimesters. In trimester one over here, we focus on all the sciences. So how does it work? How does it function? Where is it located? All the things, because we want to know how all the body parts are functioning and moving so that when you put your hands on your patients and palpation in trimester two, you know where those body parts are at. As you head into trimester, or excuse me, year two is when you're gonna focus on the techniques. 
Your first technique that you're going to learn is toggle recoil technique. This one right here. Um, this one's the one developed by BJ Palmer. So it's been in practice for over 100 years. In our uh, main technique core, you're going to learn five to seven main techniques along with the opportunity to take electives as well as uh, join different clubs and organizations to learn more hands-on technique. Palmer docs are known for their hands, so people seek us out. We receive over 50 calls a day asking for a Palmer doc, and you can find them on our website under find a doc. All right, as we head into year three and the third, uh, try seven, you're in our student clinic, and then tries eight through 10, you're going to spend time in our outpatient clinic getting all those clinic hours. You never have to go anywhere because um, you can get them all done just with us here at Palmer. All right, am I at my six minutes? <laughs> Almost. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sounds good. All right. So the last step I would say is that you can visit us here on the main campus. We do have in-person tours every Monday and Friday. You can also visit a DC in your area in Job Shadow and connect with us if you have any other questions. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, again, always very helpful to hear um, from each of our um, respective uh, representatives. Our next representative is from the Arizona, from Arizona State University. Hi, everyone. Welcome. I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, so like I said, I'm Nikki Langley. I'm from Arizona State University. Um, so I'm going to go ahead. I want to give you a little bit of background about our transfer population. Um, so Definitely think when you're a transfer student, you're not alone. We, our average transfer age is about 26. Um, and, you know, so we're coming with students that are, you know, either older than that and also um, younger than that. So definitely don't feel like, you know, you're the only one, there's no one like you. Um, and also an awesome fact is that almost half of our transfer students are Pell Grant eligible. Um, so, you know, I know financial aid is always definitely a huge factor as far as transfer students go. Um, but just know here at the university, you are definitely not alone. Um, so as far as Arizona State University goes, we actually have four different campus locations. So we have our downtown Phoenix campus, um, you know, it's in the heart of our downtown. Um, it's where a lot of our journalism and our medical majors are. Um, we have our polytechnic campus that's going to be out more so in our East Valley. You're going to find a lot of engineering majors. Um, that campus actually used to be um, an old Air Force base. So um, it's really awesome to look at. Um, and then we have our Tempe campus that is going to be our main and our largest campus. Um, you know, you, it's always busy, always thriving. You always see students there. Um, so it's awesome campus. Definitely check out. It's where most of our majors are housed. And then finally, we have our West Campus, which is more so in our West Valley. Um, the West Campus was actually modeled after Oxford University. So definitely think if you like maybe the feeling of a small private liberal arts college, but with all the resources of a big university, um, that's definitely an awesome campus to go check out. Um, so one of the awesome tools that we actually have here at the university is we actually have what's called a transfer credit guide. So we like to tell you that it takes the guesswork out of transferring. Um, so what you can go ahead and do with this transfer guide is you can actually go ahead and input your institution. So whether that's your community college, whether that's your university, um, you go ahead and put that um, in there and then you'll go ahead and put your course prefix, the number and when you took it. So for instance, um, the student took you know, English 101 and they wanted to know um, how that was gonna transfer to the university. So it'll tell you, um, you know, the course that you're trying to transfer and it'll give you the ASU equivalent. Um, so, you know, if you are having a list of courses that you're like, I wanna make sure before I do transfer that these classes are gonna be super transfer friendly and go towards the degree, definitely utilize this tool. And if you see that you actually don't have an ASU equivalent course, you can actually submit it, um, you know, for us to be able to look at it and evaluate to see how it will be uh, transferred to the university. Um, another awesome tool that we actually have for transfer students is called the My Path to ASU. So this basically takes the guesswork out of transferring. Um, you know, to make sure that you take the correct classes at your community college, especially if you know, hey, I really want to transfer to ASU down the line. Um, but you know, you wanted to start out at the community college first to save time, to save money. Um, this will help you really minimize those loss of credits. Um, so what you'll, so yeah, go ahead, definitely do that. As far as admissions is concerned, um, you know, applying to ASU, we like to make it a simple and easy process because we know um, for you transfer students, a lot of times you're doing and juggling a whole bunch of different things. Um, so you can complete our application um, at asu.edu backslash apply. Um, we accept our ASU application, the common application, as well as the coalition app. Um, so there's definitely different ways um, for you to apply. 
you'll go ahead and pay that application fee. Um, and then we do just require um, your official college transcript. If you are in the middle of taking classes, um, you know, while you're applying to the university, that's totally okay. Um, you'll just go ahead, um, we'll send us a second transcript once you finish those classes, um, and we'll be more than happy to evaluate those credits for you. You'll then get your ASU Right user ID, and that's going to lead you to your My ASU page, which will be one of the most important things. That will show you any priority tasks. It'll be where your finances tab is, um, your classes, when your registration date opens up. So definitely when you get that ASU Right user ID and log into your My ASU, definitely take a look out at that because that's going to be your hub for pretty much everything. Um, and then after you apply, we definitely encourage you, make sure you fill out your FAFSA. I know a lot of times people have, you know, the misconception, oh, I'm not going to qualify for FAFSA um, or anything like that. But you never know, um, especially, you know, in these kind of weird times, definitely apply for that FAFSA. Make sure you're, you know, doing it. So definitely encourage you to go ahead and do that. Um, another awesome tool that we have, so we do have, besides just our scholarship portal, we ha have merit-based scholarships that for students, um, whether in your, you know, a transferring student, whether you're in Phi Theta Kappa, um, anything like that. And those are some scholarships that will, the university will automatically, uh, you know, consider you for as soon as you um, apply to the university. Just, you know, remember they are competitive, but we do make sure that, you know, we are looking out for you guys, but as well um, as those scholarships that we already consider for you, we do have a scholarship portal. I always recommend not to filter out the scholarship, um, you know, too far, because once you kind of start going by academic level, GPA, um, location, major, things like that, you might find that, oh, only three scholarships are popping up, when in reality, I actually was on there earlier today, and we had over 200 scholarship opportunities available for our transfer students. Um, so definitely make sure you're taking a look at that. I, you know, just always encourage you, look for scholarships, apply for them, even if you don't think they necessarily 100% apply to you, um, because you never know here at the university, even if you maybe a scholarship doesn't 100% pertain to you, if you are the only one that filled out that application, we would much rather give you that scholarship money, because we know you're going to use it, we know you're going to be here taking those classes, um, rather than just having that, you know, money and that scholarship just kind of sit there. So again, apply, apply, apply to all scholarships that you possibly can. Um, and if you do have any questions, go ahead, go to asu.edu slash findmyrep. And we would always be more than happy um, to, you know, email you, give you a call or schedule a Zoom appointment. Awesome, thank you. Um, so before we end the webinar, or I guess we kind of near the end of the webinar, um, I do want to um, make sure that if you have any questions to feel free to reach out to our representatives. They're sharing their contact information through their slides. And so um, you're more than welcome to contact them with any questions that you may have along the way. Our next presenter, uh, last but certainly not least, is from Grand Canyon University. Okay, I'm just sharing my screen here. Um, are you, can you guys see my screen? Yes, you just need it in full screen mode. There we go. Okay. Um, it's, so, sorry to interrupt, this in presenter mode. So you just wanna go to display settings. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Um, so we are Grand Canyon University. Um, just a little bit of a quick snapshot here. We're located in Phoenix, Arizona. We're a private Christian, um, but very affordable university. We have uh, over 225 academic programs. And right now we're sitting at about 25,000 or so um, on campus ground students. We also have um, 21 division one athletic programs. Um, which we also are in the um, NCAA men's basketball tournament for the first time in history. So we're very excited about that. Um, our campus experience. So um, we have both dorm style and apartment style um, housing on campus. Um, we have four gyms on campus and a bunch of outdoor pools that you can see in this lovely picture here. Um, we have a lot of different uh, food options on campus, um, such as Chick-fil-A, Subway, Panda Express, all kinds of different options um, right on campus for um, any of our students, um, as well as a bunch of campus events going on um, each and every week. Um, so our tuition is gonna be 16,500. Um, that number hasn't changed in 11 years. Um, so that's something that I just like to mention to um, students. 
We also don't have out of state tuition. Um, so someone coming from the state of Arizona or coming from outside of Arizona is gonna pay the exact same in tuition. Um, we do offer transfer student uh, academic scholarships. Um, it is based on either your high school GPA um, or a combination of an SAT with a high school GPA and ACT with a high school GPA, um, or we can use your um, transfer GPA as well. Really whichever um, one is going to get you the higher scholarship is what we will be able to provide to you. Um, so pretty generous scholarships um, based on those GPAs. Um, we also have over uh, 200 or so outside scholarships that you can apply for um, and you can apply for as many as you'd like. And we're able to um, bring that in to cover parts of your tuition costs. Um, so, like I mentioned, we have over 225 um, academic programs. Um, some of our biggest ones that we have on campus are our engineering, medical studies, business, criminal justice, fine arts, and psychology. Those are kind of our, our main ones um, that we see the most of, most of our students coming in. Um, so, why GCU? Um, we have hands-on learning. Uh, faculty involvement, student, student empowerment, like I mentioned, no out-of-state tuition, um, state school costs, and a free application. Um, so a couple of options um, for transfer students that are looking to visit campus. Um, we have right now going on a virtual campus tour. Um, those take place Monday through Saturday, so every day of the week except Sundays. Um, we also have what's called travel reimbursement. Um, we cover our the flights for you and a parent or guardian to come and visit campus. Um, we also have what's called our Discover um, GCU trip. So that's going to be an all expenses paid overnight trip to campus. Um, right now that is happening in the month of April. Um, and we basically just need you to have an application on file as well as your transcripts. Um, and just kind of sit down with one of our admissions counselors and kind of go through a budget sheet and kind of what it would look like for you to um, transfer to GCU. And then we would be able to offer you that um, Discover trip. So a couple of nice options. Um, we really want students that are interested in GCU to have a great opportunity to come and visit before they make their final decision. And then again, um, this is my contact information. Feel free to utilize this um, to reach out to any of us. Um, we do also, so our apply.gcu.edu website, um, that is gonna be where you um, go to apply. It's a free application and there's no essay required. So um, pretty quick and easy to just hop in for 10, 15 minutes and um, fill out that application. So thank you guys so much um, and have a great rest of your night. Thank you. Um, all again, all great information shared by all our representatives and um, hope everyone has learned so much. Um, we do have some time left. And so we're gonna pivot into our Q&A portion of the webinar. And so I'll ask at this time, if all the presenters can turn on their cameras, unmute themselves, and we'll go ahead and start with the first question, which is what advice would you give someone going through the transfer process? Again, what advice would you give someone going through the transfer process? And we'll go ahead and start in the order in which you all presented it. Yeah, so some advice that I would have is look for um, what transfer specific options are being offered at the campus that you're interested in. Um, transfer students are just as important as first time freshman students. So you really wanna make sure that the school you end up going to advocates for you as a transfer student. I would say to make sure that you have all of your questions answered before you make your final enrollment decision. Students often may look at um, a tuition cost or look at what they think is their transfer credit before talking with people. So make sure you know your admission, your scholarship, your transfer credit specifically, how they transfer in time to degree along with that full financial aid package. So in the end, you know exactly how much will it cost and how long will it take for me to graduate? Don't make that decision too soon. 
I would say um, when you're thinking about com connecting with schools that you're interested in, um, the earlier the better. Um, they can often look at your schedule ahead of time and talk to you about what courses you're planning on taking and helping guide you in the right direction as far as your transfer credits. Um, so the earlier the better. And I would say also make sure that you go and visit campus if you're able to. Obviously with COVID it's kind of hard, but um, anything you can do to connect with the campus life. Perfect. So I also agree uh, for us, all of our students are transfer students, so we're pretty used to working with them. I would recommend that you always work with your admissions counselor very closely, especially with transferring credits, because sometimes you can run into a sticky situation and nobody wants to be surprised on the other end. So definitely work with admissions really close to make sure that all the classes you're taking at your community college or wherever you're going will transfer into that specific university. I would say the biggest thing is don't be afraid to ask questions. No question is, you know, dumb. There's no, oh, well, like, should I even do this? Ask the questions because this is your future. Like, this is your time. So make sure you're getting those questions answered. Make sure you're asking them because honestly, regardless of what your question is, we all are more than happy to answer them um, because we want to make sure we're helping you to the best of our abilities. I would kind of second um, everything that everyone's kind of talked about, making sure you're asking the right questions, um, having a really great relationship with your admissions counselor. Um, I think the earlier the better um, is especially important um, just because then you can make sure that the classes that you're taking maybe in that spring semester or even in the summer before you come to school in the fall are gonna transfer in and you're doing the right things and you're taking the right courses to make sure that you're not just wasting your time um, during those semesters at your community college. Great advice. I always say it's great to hear from those who work directly um, in schools uh, so that they can share um, all the great advice and tips that, um, especially when you're applying or transferring from school, how important it is. Our next question, we have time for one more, is what is your favorite event or tradition on campus? Um, so my favorite event is homecoming. Um, if you guys didn't know, Mizzou actually created homecoming um, all the way back in 1911. And it has kind of transformed into this huge celebration every October. We've got a big football game. There's a parade that happens. Um, and so it's just a really fun thing that you get to enjoy as a student. But then alumni are always invited to come back and celebrate homecoming, you know, every other October after you graduate. So that's definitely my favorite um, event that happens here at Mizzou. My favorite event at Drake is in conjunction with the Drake Relays I talked about earlier with the track and field event. Um, a part of that is called a beautiful bulldog contest. So it's literally like a pageant, um, but it's dogs. And so they um, are announced, they go across the stage, they're judged, and then one is picked each year as the beautiful bulldog that reigns for the year. My favorite tradition um, here at Fontbonne is Fontbonne Day, um, which is an annual day of service. Um, so part of our mission is to um, serve thy dear neighbor um, and give back to our community. And that's very important to us. Um, we are an important role in our community and our community um, really embraces us as well. So it's just a day for all the students, faculty, staff to get together and do some community service. Okay, so I also agree with Casey. My favorite is homecoming. We do homecoming weekend a little different. We actually do it in like August. So it's not the typical homecoming type S time, but we have lots of fireworks, of course. And it's just really amazing to have all of our alumni come back so our DCs can get their continuing education credits during that time. And we just have fabulous DCs from all over the world come and speak. So it's really special to hear them and just see all the wonderful things that our students are doing. My favorite tradition um, at Arizona State is actually one um, that you do at the beginning of the year. So we have a giant A, um, you know, it paint, it's painted yellow, you know, gold. Um, it's at the top of a mountain. And so every year what students do is they actually will climb a mountain and they will actually dip their hand in paint and then they'll put their hand um, on the A and we'll, it'll all turn white um, to signify the beginning of a new year. Um, so it's always super excited. Then we paint it back to gold right before game day. 
Um, I don't have a necessarily specific event. Um, I would just say our basketball games um, that are on campus are just really fun. Um, they do like a lot of really great uh, activities. There's a whole student section. Um, people go crazy. Um, so it's just really fun to be a part of that. And now that we're in the tournament for the first time this year, um, that's exciting and everyone's very excited on campus. Thank you all for sharing. I always love to hear about the different events and traditions on different campuses. And um, I think it's always great to hear how different and unique they all are. So thank you all to our presenters. Thank you for sharing. And thank you um, so much to all of you for joining us. Um, before we close, there will be a quick survey that will appear. It's a four question four question uh, quick survey. And if you can take a brief moment to fill that out um, and any feedback you share with us will be really helpful. And then next, our uh, this recording will be available a week from today at strivescan.com backslash Illinois. Again, thank you all for joining us and I hope you all have a great evening.